All right. Bon dia, bon tardi, bon noche. Welcome back to the show, guys. Today with me, I have Dr. Lung Young. What's up, doctor? Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming back, dude. Yeah. Hey, um, so, doctor, what's it like being a doctor, dude? Oof. I don't know, man. It's, it's like a, a weird job. It's basically a job, right? I think yeah. it, it wouldn't be any different for you. Like, I guess it's it's a sense of fulfillment, right? Yeah. Like doing what you love doing. But I guess you also love what, doing what Absolutely. you love doing. Absolutely. I love so. what I'm doing. I guess in that sense, not very different. Yeah. But when, when you hear doctor, there's always like a heavy like note that comes with it. Like it sets a very serious tone when you're a doctor. Same as when you're growing up. Someone says, yeah, I'm going to become a doctor. It's like, yeah. whoa. You know, step back. I think it's a, it's more of an outside looking in thing. Like when you're in it, when you're a doctor, you don't really experience it that way, right? You don't feel that that special or anything. It's just it's a career, man. You chose it. It's interesting. You love, I hope, doing what you do. Yeah. Oh yeah. And how how early on did you know you wanted to become a doctor? Because I remember specifically when we were in grade school, we had so many moments where people asked, yeah. "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And people would name random shit like police officer. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, like fucking eleven year olds would say accountants, and we would like. Okay, but you, I remember specific one time you mentioned that you want to become a doctor and like yeah. no one was like, you're not going to make it. Everyone was like, oh yeah, 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 most likely he will end up becoming a doctor. But for you, when, when did that journey start? Well, uh, funny enough, it didn't start that early on though. Like I think I, what you're saying is true. Like it, it was the easy answer, right? Because yeah. my dad's a GP, so I was like, oh, I might as well do that, right? But I had no sense of what being a doctor is. Like I had no idea what it is, right? So uh, I think like early on in grade school, like it was mostly like seeing my dad like doing his job, like the sense of fulfillment he got from that job. That's what piqued my interest, right? It was like, this might be an interesting career path, even not knowing anything at all about what his actual job is, what he's doing. Like you have a vague sense of what it is, right? Like you see him talking to patients, dealing with patients, but you're not in the room, obviously. But so you have no idea what that's like, right? But you do see like people always ask me, like uh, mostly my family, like, your dad makes such long hours. He works so hard. Like, why does he do that? Like, it's not a nine to five job, right? But and no one seems to understand that. And early on, I think, I, I think, and I still think that's the reason. Like, is that sense of fulfillment he gets from that job, right? Were you, were you able to see that as a young kid? Like, you were able to actually yeah, like fun- feel that fulfillment he had? Exactly. Like, funnily enough, like I've never spoken to him about it, right? Like, I've never asked him like, is this job fulfilling us? It's always been. That sense I got from him, like, wow. this man loves this job, right? Like, wow. he, he works so hard because he loves it. It's if, not- if you're able to, like, display that to a child, yeah. then you must be really, really Exactly, your exactly. Job. I yeah. think that's also a reason why I never needed to ask him, like, hey, do you love your job? It was like, he's like oh, my dad loves his job. Like, he's only doing this because he loves it. He wouldn't make those hours if he didn't like doing it. Yeah, because your dad is by far my favorite doctor. I've been to so many doctors on the island. Like, unnecessarily, I don't know what it was my, my mom, but she just took us from doctor to doctor for some reason. Yeah. When we ended up at your dad's practice, and the first time I said I want your dad, I was like, okay, this is what a doctor's supposed to be. I feel like I'm going to be saved. I feel good. So yeah. I love going to your dad. Yeah, th- I think that's what my dad takes pride in, like the fact that patients like him. Like, they like him as a doctor. They trust him as a doctor, and like he, he has to put in the hours for that, but then it's worth it to him. Holy the shit. I get from it. You know what all of a sudden I remembered, like just top of my head? Yeah. Um, the, one of the reasons why I always had such so much respect for your dad is, remember one time you were in my house, was me, you, Arthur, I think Graham was there too, yeah, yeah. and my dad got sick. Oh, yeah. He got really, really sick, yeah. and he was sick for, for a long time, and we had to... Um, we had to call an ambulance. Yeah. But, like, we were panicking and everything. Like, he yeah. came out, he was, like, he couldn't breathe and shit. So, you, thank God, you decided to call your dad as well. Yeah. And your dad just, he, your dad showed up before the, the ambulance did. Yeah. So, well, fast ambulance is not something that happens on Curacao, yeah. period. But I remember, now all of a sudden I remember that your dad actually showed up and your dad was there, like, fucking calming everyone down and, like, yeah. having a situation, helping my dad out. Yeah, like, uh, of course, he, he do that because he's, he's my dad, right? And of course. you're my friend. Like, of course, he'll show up, but... He does that for all his patients, yeah. right? Like, if they call him, he'll be there. Like, something that's in Holland, it's not common. Like, if you need your, your GP, you call his office, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they connect you. If it's out, out of office hours, they connect you to uh, the house or post here, and then they connect you to the doctor who's on shift or whatever. There, it's more common t- for you to also have your doctor's uh, mobile number, right? So you just directly call them. Yeah. And if it's, like, not an emergency, my dad will direct them to the doctors on call. But he's always available there for his patients. You think right? that's because, like, the size of the island and that most people are really connected to that one doctor in their neighborhood? Or is it is it just, like, a cultural thing? I, th- I think it's part of it. I think we used to have that in Holland. And as we modernized and we got more technology here and uh, uh, everything developed in the first line with GPs, that changed. And I think that change hasn't happened as much in, in 
on the islands for the better and the worse, I guess. Yeah, because like that was one of the worst nights ever. That like yeah, that if if your parent gets so sick and then once your dad arrived, he was a doctor. Like okay, at least yeah, yeah. at least we're doing what we got to do. Yeah, so, I think and, I, I, ne- I never actually properly thanked him for that. So I don't think you need to. I don't need I to, but it, oh, it, it 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 means so much that I, I think I'll, I'll send him a, a LinkedIn message. Be like, <laughs> hey man, thanks for being the hero. Yeah, I think you'd love to hear that. Yeah. So how do you go from like figuring out when you want to become a doctor to actually becoming a doctor? Like when did that start for you? Yeah. So like I was saying, like looking at my dad doing his job, that was like the idea I got for him. This man loves his job. It's a sense of fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was more that idea, like, I want a job that also fulfills me in that way, right? Gives me that sense of fulfillment. But it only started in high school when we started getting biology and stuff where I realized, like, oh, biology, medicine, it's it's super interesting, right? I could imagine a career in this. And that's when you start thinking about, hey, maybe I should focus on a career on medicine. But, I mean, we went to high school together, right? Like, I wasn't super into school. Like, I passed by, but I by no means had the grades to get into high school, right? On the way. (laughs) Exactly, (laughs) exactly. Like. I always thought like, uh, oh, medicine seems interesting. Let's go for medicine. But I never actually put in the work in high school to get the grades because you need an eight-point average or higher to automatically get in. Otherwise, you have this whole lottery system to get in. So I didn't get in like the first year of med school. I did two years of uh, biomedical sciences. And it's pretty much the same thing, right? Like the basis is you you learn biology, medicine, uh, and the clinical works comes later if you study medicine. And then in biomedical sciences, it's more of a a research uh, career, right? A research-oriented study. Uh, So after the second year, I think when going into the third year, you start doing more lab work, and then you realize more of, oh, this is what my job is going to be, right? And that job didn't give me that sense of fulfillment, right? Like, research is great. I'd still love to do research, but I miss the clinical work, like working yeah. with patients. And that's when I was thinking, human like, to human connection. Exactly. And that's when I started thinking, like, maybe I should try again for medicine. And I was lucky enough to get in. And then uh, I was more serious at that point. So uh, it wasn't easy, but, like, I got through med school, like, six years. Uh, so. Yeah. So what's med school like? Because I think when people hear about someone becoming a doctor, yeah. like, Everyone says, oh, he's in med school. I think very few people actually understand what that entails, what it means. Like, how do you, because it's such a long trajectory, longer than most studies yeah, 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 or yeah. longer than most common studies yeah. anyway. Yeah. So most people don't know what the hell med school is supposed to seem like. How, yeah. how, did, how was that for you? Yeah, how like, so, so the first three years of med school, like uh, it differs per university when you start with your clinical rotations. Like Utrecht is a little earlier. You already start in your third year and then your third, fourth year is a mix of uh, lectures and clinical rotations. But like in general, the first three years is just lectures, 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 exams, like forming the basis. So you have a general theoretical sense. work. Yeah. So okay. it's bo- basically just theoretical work and uh, like certain parts of clinical examination they teach you. So you're ready when you start with your clinical rotations. Right. And then the clinical rotations is mostly the clinical work. But mostly what you're doing is uh, seeing every single subspeciality and getting a, a feel for it. Like uh, you get six weeks of cardiology and then you got to learn and apply the basics you learned in the first three years. So you get a sense of, you have a basic knowledge of, of the speciality, and then, uh, yeah, at the end of the six years, you have to decide which speciality is for you. And then you've already seen all of them, so it's easier to make that decision, right? So what did you choose? Well, I'm still choosing, right? So okay, yeah. when you finish med school, it's six years, and then uh, you, got, you have to choose a residency program, or you choose and apply for and get accepted to. And what most people do and what I'm doing now is uh, you work as a resident not in training. So most people do that one or two years and then you apply for the residency program. An alternative is you could do a PhD program, then it's four years and then you apply for it. Uh, so right now I'm work- I did one year uh, of work in, uh, in neurology in Utrecht and uh, now I'm uh, busy with uh, half a year now uh, in neurosurgery department in uh, Nijmegen. Uh, and uh, I hope to apply for a residency program in neurology. All right, so, neurology. Yeah. And what does that entail? Like explain to the, to the people at yeah, home exactly in, what it entails. In, in layman's terms, it's uh, doctors who focus on diseases of the brain, uh, spinal uh, cord, and uh, peripheral nerves. So nerve diseases. So like think of a stroke, for example, like a doctor that focuses on stroke, but also MS, multiple sclerosis, dementia, those kind of things. Right? Oh, damn. Yeah, so it's, it's, sounds it's, heavy. Yeah, it's a very interesting field. It's also a field that's uh, continuously in development. So that's what I like about it. And it's just uh, like... I think if I chose for cardiology, I'd also be very happy as a cardiologist, probably. But this is during uh, my during med school what spoke to me the most. So uh, I really love it so far. So yeah, it's probably because you also you also kind of like a challenge too, don't you? Yeah, but I think like every field you choose, whatever specialty you choose, it'd be a challenge, right? Yeah. Like you find the challenge, you find like what you like to do, and you create your own like work, right? 
your own uh, challenges in your work. How how many uh, fellow Antianos, people from the islands, did you maybe encounter in med school? Like how yeah. how common is it for people to take the medical? Yeah, very road? F- well, more common than you would think. But like I have to be honest, like in med school, very few, right? Like yeah. I think I knew like maybe two or three other people spread throughout the six years in Utrecht. Uh, really, because it, it is a big city. Yeah, exactly. Like you would think there'd be more, but uh, and there are, but you just don't know each other. And that's like something I found out in my fifth year. You start thinking about that more. Like hey. Why am I the only one here? Like, there have to be more, right? Yeah. So, and that's how we started the uh, Association Medico de Antillas, uh, AMA. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about that because you, along with your, some fellow Antianos, yeah. and yeah. also friends of us from back school as well, with Zede uh, Getrouw, yeah. and Dieter Verhogen, and you mentioned there was one more person that I don't know personally. Yeah, two, two people, like Thijs Tong and Dayanara Jean-Pierre, they were in the first board of, uh, of the okay. association. So, but, you, you went from... Going to want to be a doctor, going to medical school, and actually starting an association yeah. with medicine. Yeah. I mean, that's not what a lot of people end up doing. I mean, most people go just you know be a doctor and go be a doctor. But yeah. w- what was what was the reason for wanting to start well, that? The reason, like uh, Zahira studied uh, pharmacy, right? Yeah. I think she was already done at that point. And I was talking to her like, hey, uh, like, do you know more people that study medicine, study pharmacy? Because pharmacy is also like uh, six years of, of schooling, and then you also have to do like residency programs before you're fully done and can work on the islands. So she, she has the same trajectory as me, right? Uh, long in Holland, thinking about going back and uh, looking for people to connect with, talk about this, uh, talk about this with. Um, so yeah, we were talking and she also didn't know that many people, but still a few. I knew a few people and then we started talking to those people, asking them like, hey, do you know more people? And they knew more people. And then we started mailing all these people, messaging them and asking them like, hey, what do you think about uh, we starting an association, right, for us? So we all know each other, so we have this network, so we can connect. And everyone was super enthusiastic about it, right? And like you said, like Zahira Getrouw and Indira van Hoge, we knew them from high school, right? Like I knew these. Yeah, go way back. Yeah, yeah. like I known them for a long time, right? Uh, but Dayanara and Thais, I didn't know them at all. Like those are one of the few people that we connected through getting more info from other people, right? And still with the same story, still just trying to... Same story, same story. Uh, both of them also did medicine. Thais was still in med school at that point, and right. Dayanara was uh, working as a resident, not in training in the surgical uh, department. Can't exactly remember where, but... So we all had the same experience, same background, and we all had this passion to connect and uh, yeah, create this network. And uh, so far, like you asked, like how many people are there like right now... Uh, Active members or members, I think we have around 260. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, and I don't think even that's everyone, right? And that's across Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao. That's all six islands. All so six islands. Also St. Oh, Martin. Wow. Uh, there Both aren't. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, damn. Yeah. And like from the 260, is it a combination of people who are just starting their medical journey, people who are already mm. working, people who are finishing their study? Is it like a big mix? Yeah, I think that's the, the unique part of our association, right? You have uh, people in all uh, parts of their careers, right? Like, so we have med schools, f- first year med students. We have people who are in the phase that I am in now, like in-betweeners. You also have people already in the residency program, but you also have people already done, already working as a GP or a specialist. And I think that that's very unique because like, yeah, definitely. I can only imagine like when I came to Holland, I was in my first year of med school. You have so many questions, right? And it'd be great like if you had this association, you have someone who's already done, who's already experienced it, uh, who could share their experience. Yeah, it's with invaluable you. being able to actually just ask people from yeah. the same walk of life, like, yeah. "Hey, yeah. what can I expect? What should I look out for? Yeah. Give me some tips." Yeah, oh, that's know, great, dude. You know, one thing I realized like uh, when I started med school. It's like on Curacao, we have great schools, right? Like Absolutely. All yeah. three of them, I think, are great, great Absolutely. high schools, like uh, Mill, PSA, and Rodolfus. But all of them are VWO, right? None of them I'm are. VWO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But none of them are a gymnasium. No. Which, does it matter? We didn't even have that at, at Exactly. The, yeah, it doesn't, they they it have that exist. at um, that private school near my house. It's fucking Which tiny one? private ah, school. Uh, Abu Tasman, right? Abu Tasman. Yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I think they have it there. I'm yeah. not sure. Like, But the only difference is you get Latin and you could pick Greek there, right? On a gymnasium. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you start med school, like everyone's done gymnasium. It doesn't matter, but except when you get those textbooks, everyone's like, oh, this means this, this means this. And you're like, you're sitting, no idea. You're sitting there with yeah. your English to Greek <laughs> exactly. translator. Yeah. So it's Thank God those small translate. things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. But that's what you're saying is super true. Like if for me, for example, I've, I wish I would have had the opportunity to connect more with people studying the same thing yeah. I did. And yeah. people who at least have the same idea of where we're going in the future, yeah. because and there's a lot of studies that when you're studying it, you're not completely sure what you're going to end up doing. Like if, if you have a, a marketing degree, you can do so many different many things. things. Yeah. But like medicine, for example, like you're still in a pretty like specific field. Yeah. Like you can do a lot of different things, of course, but 
everyone's heading towards the same direction. Yeah, of, yeah, you yeah. have to go through the six years, like you said. Yeah. I w- I, it would have been invaluable for me to just be able to connect on a business level with people. Just studying business. Like, just talk to people who are, like, business owners in Curacao. People who studied business in Holland and went back to Curacao. Yeah. Had the connection. So, that's really great. What's What's the goal now for... Um, AMA like what do you guys what's what's the big yeah. thing you guys are working on like uh, we do multiple things now it's hard for me to even keep track of everything we do because there's so many members and everyone's doing different yeah, things people yeah exactly, a lot, so. exactly like the biggest thing we do right now I think is uh, our Caribbean healthcare symposium we're going on the third year now uh, it's, uh, we get about 150 and 175 attendees a year uh, but more importantly, we get a representation from all the islands, right? We get uh, a representative from all the hospitals on the islands. We get a representative from all the governments on the islands. We get a representative of the Ministry of Health in Holland. So it's like the discussions they have on the islands about the healthcare, uh, about uh, what the challenges they're facing. Uh, they can also have that discussion at the symposium, right? Or at least we can wow. hear about those discussions and we can ask questions and we're involved in, in, in the conversation. That's no small feat, though. Ex- exactly. So, and like, there's a lot of goodwill from the islands, right? Because we started out very, as a very small association, right? We had no income, no funds. And the hospitals were very willing uh, to pay for, to one, sponsor uh, the symposium, but more importantly, also send a representative, right? Like they pay for their own flight, they don't pay for their own hotel. So they see the importance of the association wow. and being involved in keeping that connection, right? Damn, that's so, impressive, dude. Yeah, and like that, that's just one of the things we do. We do a lot more. Uh, yeah, what else do we do? We do a lot of lectures that are also open for, for the public, right? So we do, so far, we've had psychiatry on the island, which is a, a very underbelicht uh, subject on the island. So Definitely. it's it very interesting to hear about that. We had a symposium about. A lecture about uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, what else do we had? We had diabetes, and uh, recently we just finished a whole webinar series on oncology on the island. So, wow, yeah, you guys are busy. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot. But, but you're no longer part of the board, right? Yeah, so like uh, I did the board for two years. Uh, I was president uh, of the association for two years, and then after two years, uh, I stepped down. And then uh, now we have a full new board, except uh, Thais, who is now the president, which is also nice to see. She started yeah. out within the board and then moved up to... That's dope. Yeah, she's doing great. So like, it's, it's great to be able to hand it off and not have to worry about it and know yeah. it's going great. But like... Because you're mentioning you, that you guys do so many different things, yeah. is that combinable with your work? Because I mean, the doctor's life is yeah. not a easy, is not is not um, the, the easy road in any means. And you've mentioned that you have a lot of night shifts and stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, true. So is that combinable? Can you? Yeah, get- you combine it. Like uh, for example, night shifts. Like you have to be there, and like stuff can happen, and then you're busy for a few hours. But a lot of the night is just like sitting around, right? You have to wait. You could sleep. Like they have uh, piquet cameras, so where you could rest, but. Also, if you sleep during the day, which I usually do, you stay awake during the night and then you can do this kind of stuff. And it's stuff, like, again, that sense of fulfillment. Uh, you don't mind doing stuff for it on the weekend, right? It doesn't have to be, like, a whole Absolutely. day. But, like, just taking out an hour or two to just work on things for AMA, that, like, it's not a big deal. Like, Damn, that's dope. Yeah. And I'm guessing a big part of it is also helping people find, like, a little bit of clarity in their future plans, right? Because you mentioned that it's not, before it wasn't easy to, figure out what was needed on the islands based on your speciality and everything. Yeah, but- exactly. There's like a disconnect between uh, the healthcare providers working in Holland. So let's just take doctors, for example, and what is needed on, on the islands, right? So uh, the pe- when you go to study medicine, you go to study medicine to become a doctor, right? That's your goal. And then after the six years, you start thinking about what speciality you're going to choose. But when you're choosing that speciality, uh, you have to think about a lot more stuff, right? You have to think like, do I want to go back to the island? If I want to go back to the island, I have to take into account what they need on the island, right? Let's just take a, a hypothetical example on the islands, right? Like, let's say they only need five orthopedic surgeons on, on Curacao, right? If all five of them, or if they currently have five orthopedic surgeons and all five of them are in their mid-30s, late, uh, mid to late 30s, the chances of you finding a job once you're an orthopedic surgeon are quite low, right? Is that number based on just historical data of how many instances there are of injuries or diseases or sicknesses per Per capita, and yeah, how many the, the, doctors are necessary? Exactly, that, that should be part of capacity planning, right? Yeah, like assessing like how much uh, zorg you deliver, like how many. So over the years, you can tell like, oh, we need one more orthopedic surgeon, but it's always a little bit of guesswork, I'm guessing. But yeah, you base it on data from the past and what you expect to happen in the future, right? Yeah. So so people got to just try and f- try to play the game and figure out, okay, if if I know for sure I want to make my yeah. career on the islands, I have to be able to provide the service that they need exactly exactly or at least that has to weigh in on uh in your choice right 
you have to decide like what's more important to you. Like if you know you orthopedic surgery is exactly what you want to do, your that's it. Yeah. And maybe if they don't need orthopedic surgeon, you have to think about maybe I'll just have a career in Holland. And it's fine, right? But at least you have to be informed about this to, to make your decision. And I think part of that is like what we're trying to achieve with AMA to close this disconnect, right? Before, like every single person had to figure that out all over again, right? Like let's say I, I finished med school. I'm thinking about what I want to do. I have to get into contact with the hospital and find out what they need, right? A much easier solution would be if like it's, if it's just available to everyone right yeah the information just, is exactly provided beforehand exactly you just approach ama and ama can bring you into contact with the right people and also tell you like hey this is you want to become a cardiologist this is what they expect to need in the coming five to ten years right and how long has ama already been established uh we're going on three years now oh longer now yeah we're in our third year now so we're established in the end of 2017 so and in those three years like Have you have you guys been able to bear the fruit of that? Are people is it easier now for people to get that connection? Are you seeing that people are are having an easier time achieving that? Yes and no. I think uh, our biggest obstacle in the beginning was uh, getting into contact with all the hospitals, like getting our name out there. Like uh, when we started, a lot of people just thought, or a lot of hospitals thought, we were a student association, so it was just med students. But we're a lot more than that, right? Like because we also have most of our members are people already done, right? Yeah. So I think it's like. 70, 30 now, maybe, like in favor of people who already finished med school. Oh. Yeah, so uh, that was the biggest hurdle. We got over that reasonably quick, took maybe a year. And then the second point was addressing the problem, right? And then also going into discussion, so how are we going to solve this? Like, right, Capacity uh, planning is one thing, like that's pretty easy to achieve, right? The islands just have to give you an overview of how many specialists are working there when they expect to go uh, retire uh, and what they expect to need uh, in the future, right? And for us, it's easier because all our members uh, filled in a form for us so we know how far along they are in their study or in their residency program and what their career choices are, what they want to specialize in. So that's information we can give to the hospital quite easily. So that's an overview that we try to update every year because that changes, right? Like if in my, in my second year of med school, how representative is it that I want to become a cardiologist? Maybe when I'm in my fifth year, I want to become something completely different, right? Yeah. So every year you have to keep updating that. Right. Damn, sounds like really important work. I mean, it sounds like like the infrastructural things you have to do on the island to make sure that the country can move forward yeah, exactly, into the future exactly. in the right way. Yeah. Because, I mean, the worst thing for any country is lag on in important industry and important fields. Um, yeah. And you guys have a bit of an idea of how many people from like the 260 actually want to go back now? Like, is, yeah, is, is, is there a bit, is there a bit of a clear split? It's hard for me to, to give an exact number, but I'd say it's most. Yeah, like most. I'd go more towards 90%. Wow. I wonder if it's obtainable for all 90% to, to go back, if the islands really need that many uh, doctors and pharmacists. But I think most want to go back and... I think that's great for the islands that so Absolutely. many people want to go back. Yeah, just, bring the talent back, you know. Exactly, and it's up to us to figure out how we're going to get those people back, right? Yeah, because you also mentioned last time that it's a matter of either you're a jack of all trades and you're you're more pliable, you can fit into whatever need is there. Mm -hmm. And but if you're a super hardcore subspecialist, yeah, then it's going to be harder if that's one sp one specific spot isn't really full. Yeah, that's that's also something you have to take into account when you want to if you want to go work on the islands, right? Like in Holland. Well, we need a lot of super specialists, right? Because there's so many hospitals and you have uh, specialized centers, centers that focus on one certain disease, right? And you need that a lot less on the islands, right? You need, in, like you're saying, a jack of all trades within certain specialists, right? Um, how, many, how many people are from the from AMA are fit more into the category of jack of all trades? Like, for, like uh, speaking of someone who has yeah. no understanding of exactly how the medical world works, like, are you considered a jack of all trades? No, like, uh, you have to look at it slightly different, right? So, uh, after med school, you do the residency, not in training, and then after you, you do that, you do your residency program, right? And then you're a specialist, right? Okay. Once you're a specialist, you're, uh, you're, for example, a specialist, a neurologist, right? And then within neurology, you have certain uh, subspecialisms, like, for example, just naming something stroke, right? And then... Uh, so then maybe your neurologist focuses more on vascular diseases, right? And that's what they need less of on the islands, right? They need more a neurologist that's focused in all the subspecialisms of neurology and less that are focused on one certain subspeciality. Right. So there's, there's layers, man. It's like a yeah, layer. yeah, exactly. Oh, damn. 
So like, right now, like, what do you think the island needs the most? Like, what's what's the biggest ask right now? I, I think that's hard, man. That's a hard uh, question to answer because I don't know. I haven't I haven't worked there, so I, I don't know what the pathologies so are they see so often. There enough. isn't there isn't like a clear standard one that everyone knows. Okay, we need more of this. Uh, well, I guess there are multiple, right? Like, I think in all fields, they're constantly, constantly looking for for a new influx of, of of doctors. So I can't really think of one specific field where there's always a, a spot. All right. So for you, any plans of going back? Yeah, eventually. That's yeah. that's the end goal. Uh, I'm in absolutely no hurry to go back. Like, I love everything I'm doing here with AMA. I still have to do the whole uh, residency program if I ever find a residency program. How long does it take? Six years. Six so years, I'll yeah. be here a minimum of another six years, and I, I don't mind that at all. I think there's a lot you could do for the islands from here too, right? Absolutely. Exactly. So yeah, eventually, like I hope to work there as a specialist. Yeah. 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 Kind of is is it, is it also a bit of that just that connection you have with home, or is it also like a sense of responsibility and patriotism that you because you you've always been very vocal in going back and well towards me in our conversation yeah. about yeah. going back, contributing, helping yeah. the island move forward. Is it because I can see both angles of it that it's a great place to be. It's relaxing. It's a beautiful country. Yeah. Great food. Great atmosphere. But also, there's a sense of there's work that needs to be done. Yeah, exactly. Like you see that that they're always looking for 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 new doctors, and then you're like, hey, I study medicine. Like it, it's kind of a calling to go back and actually work there. But and besides, like a sense of duty to go do something for the island that provided so much for me. It's also a sense of fulfillment, right? Like yeah. I can only imagine like working there would be great. It would give me that sense of fulfillment, helping your own people. I think it's also very important to have your, to have local doctors go back. Um, I think it's great and fantastic that a lot of Dutch doctors go work there. And that's something we should definitely retain. I think the strength of the island is that we have a nice mix, right? Yeah. We have doctors from all over the world. We have doctors from, Mo from South America. We have doctors from Holland, so Dutch doctors. We have local doctors that went abroad to study and came back. I think that mix of cultures is great, right? But I think there's a difference when you have uh, a doctor in front of you from the same background, right? Like uh, in the States, uh, there have been a lot of uh, research that has been done in mostly African-American population where they assess that when you have a doctor from the same ethnicity sitting in front of you, you receive significantly better care, right? Really? Like, you could have a whole discussion about Subconsciously, that. Subconsciously, I'm like, assuming, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, not, not even that, but I think even if you take away the cultural aspect, right, uh, language is a big barrier. Like, in the U.S., less than it's more of a cultural thing. It's more easy to, to speak to someone from the same background who has the same background as you. Uh, but in our case, I think language also plays a, a large role, right? I think most, if not everyone on the island, speaks fantastic Dutch, right? Yeah. Or at least to a level where you can have a normal conversation Absolutely. with them, right? So as a patient sitting in front of a doctor, you can have a normal conversation. But I think we can both say that expressing yourself in Papiamento is a lot different, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And if, you, if, if it's something, uh, such a touchy subject as health, like that's very important, right? The small nuances in how you phrase things, how you express things to your doctor, to me, is very important, right? And I think that's the strength of it, like having a mix of all doctors from everywhere, right? And I think us as local doctors then have a duty to, like, our colleagues from Holland, from South America, to introduce them to our culture, like, embrace them and, like, teach them the, the small nuances of our yeah, culture. Man. Man. Take them to Wet n Wild the first day, <laughs> make, give them some pastiche, and <laughs> like, then they're good. That's part of it, right? Before that's you know it, they'll be dancing, say, ooh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, like, if you give someone a diet advice, right? Tell them to eat, eat healthy. You got to know what they're eating normally, right? Yeah. You got to know what a pastiche tastes like. Exactly. Right? So that's also part of it. Because he says like, yeah, what do you, what do you eat in a day? Oh, well, I eat yambo every day. And person has no idea what yambo is, then you're not going to be able to make yeah, that connection. Yeah, yeah. You know? But also like, you also have to take into account smaller things, right? Like the island has to import a lot of fruit and vegetables, right? It's expensive. Yeah. Like, I can imagine like if you have a doctor's salary, you notice that less, right? Like you, you, you realize that stuff's more expensive on the islands, but I can imagine that you don't realize how much more expensive. It's a lot cheaper to get fast food, to get unhealthy Absolutely. diet. So just telling someone to have a healthy diet on the island, that's, that's super easy. Yeah, also, like, you can't be recommending a certain ingredient or, like, food. Exactly. That's, that's out of someone's yeah. income bracket. Yeah, and also knowing what our cultural palate is like, like yeah. how we normally cook, right? Yeah. A lot of salt. Definitely a lot yeah. of salt. Yeah. Is that a problem in Curacao, you think? Yeah, oh. I think yeah. Like if you look at how many people have diabetes on the island, that, uh, that's a big problem. Yeah. It's something we have to work on, like finding a balance in that, like still retaining like, the food, because I love the food, there, yeah, right? Absolutely. But something has to change, right? Yeah. yeah. And, but speak, speaking on that, what I always thought was like the biggest problem in Curacao, again, speaking as a layman, like is just how many people are overweight and obese and just yeah. so 
like primally overweight. It's yeah. like it's like so normal there to be overweight yeah. and to have yeah. a whole family be overweight. Yeah. And, and I grew up in an overweight family too. Yeah. Um, like, is that something that that you guys recognize and talk about a lot? Because like, is is obesity not something that should be super simple to solve? Well, you would think that, but I think income has a lot to do to do with that, right? Like poverty, also, right? Like if you don't have the money to buy healthy food, True that. you can't eat healthy. If you're working two jobs, it's hard to go out and exercise, right? Like especially if you have a desk job. So, like dealing with poverty there is part of it, and also giving health advice, telling people to eat healthy, telling what the consequences of of being overweight are. So it's something that like being in Holland is harder to deal with. Like you see it there, like yeah. but. It's harder to do something about from here, right? That's something that uh, the healthcare providers there have to work on, and I think yeah. are working on. Yeah, because if I look at just my my own family, like, like of course most people yeah. here so have big big families. I have yeah. like eight uncles and shit. Yeah. So, like, if I look across the whole board, so many of them are heavy. Yeah. But heavy to the point where you worry about their health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if 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 you're heavy, but you know you fucking box five times a week <laughs> and you fucking hey yeah. do do you man? Yeah, it's yeah. all good, but. Are there any like immediate health concerns on the islands? Things you guys are trying to really tackle? Is there something that stands out for us as, as islands? No, not necessarily one specific disease that I could name right now. I think the biggest challenge the islands are facing are, uh, are making decisions in what care they're providing. Right? Okay. Like, what does that mean exactly? Exactly. Like in, in Holland, like on the islands, we just have to accept that we can't provide all the care we provide in Holland. Right? We have to make decisions of what care we provide. Like have to make certain choices. Um, there's, there's a budget. There's a limit. No, no, not even a budget. Yeah, a budget thing. Then maybe that's the correct way to, to phrase it. Like, um, you can't have one specialist or one specialized center that focuses on a certain disease that maybe you see only once or twice on the island, right? That's just not financially feasible, right? Yeah. And I think what the islands are doing, only uh, recently started doing, is great, right? They started looking at, within their own hospitals, like, what are their specialities? What are they focused on? And what are their spear punten, zeg maar? And then building upon that, right? And then they're hoping, and I hope they achieve that, to have more referrals within uh, within the islands themselves, right? Among the islands. Yeah. So I think that would be great because just looking at it's probably more complex than this, but just on a basic level looking at this, like the insurance company pays for care, right? So if you fly it to Colombia, the insurance company is paying to the hospital in Colombia. Yep. So that's money leaving the country. Like if you go to a, from Curacao to St. Martin, like the money is going from Curacao to St. Martin, but it's still staying within the kingdom on one of the islands. Yeah. And imagine if you build out those centers, I can only imagine that maybe it'll even create more jobs, right? So it's a win-win in that sense. And then the referrals that can't go to Colombia would also be great if they could also go to Holland, right? Yeah. If that can, because it's a long, longer distance. Yeah, you want to keep it more in-house, of course. Yeah, and it's something that like I don't think I, I don't have an answer to it, but it's just a feeling I have. Like if you're on Curacao and you have someone who's sick, so they're in their most vulnerable situation they've probably ever been in their life, and they have to fly out to Colombia. To me, that seems like a bigger step than flying out to Aruba or to Bonaire, right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So like. I don't fucking been to Colombia. I don't know what the fuck is there. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what to expect. Exactly. So I think that that's a, a much smaller st- step than going to Colombia. So if that can be achieved, that would be great. Damn. Right. And a big part of that is also maybe just having more people going back to the islands to contribute to those decision-making powers as well, right? Yeah, like local healthcare providers going back and uh, adding to the workforce there, like where needed. Yeah. Is, is, it, is it a big challenge now besides like finding out which posts are available and which spots need to be filled? Like to get people to go back. I mean, mm-hmm. if ninety percent of people want to go back, I mean, you gotta also have incentives for people. People gotta have want to have the, the right salary, I guess, or yeah, have the right I, means. I think that's that plays a, a much smaller role uh, than you would think. Like, okay. I don't think. Uh, Luckily, of course. Yeah, I don't think you need many incentives to, for people to go back within the healthcare uh, profession. I think most people have a passion for it. They have a calling, and the people that want to go back want to go back. Like. As a doctor, you're going to make a decent salary there, right? So I don't think that's the incentive you need. I think the biggest problem the islands have is that capacity planning is just very, very difficult. Like, right? It's one thing to tell, uh, to assess what you need as a doctor, but uh, because of the way the medical system is set up in Holland with the education system, it's very hard um, to get into a residency program, right? And rightfully so, right? You want the right people in the right speciality, people that fit that speciality. Yeah. And for Holland, they put a maximum capacity on all the residency programs, right? So you don't get an overflow of doctors that then there's no work for. 
uh, in their planning and don't take the islands into account. That's part of the reason is that the islands are autonomous countries, right? Yeah. Like Holland can't assess for the islands what they need, right? The islands have to decide that themselves. Um, the problem is with the residency program, like rightfully so, as I said, there's a longer trajectory to get in. You have to show that you have an affinity within the field to get into the residency program. So that takes longer, right? And then it's harder to plan, right? If maybe I want to become a neurologist, but maybe I never managed to become a neurologist, right? Yeah. So then it's harder for the islands to keep me into account. Like they can't say like, oh, Lung wants to become a neurologist. We'll keep that spot open for him, right? Because yeah, they, they don't how, know. How can they track it over exactly, all the years? You need exactly, exactly. And among 260 people, for yeah. example, that's, that's very hard to do. Damn. Yeah. But I do feel that like even even though you had to like you did your medical school and you, and you did all your six years, yeah. like knowing you from back then and keeping in touch, you definitely made use of um, what everyone recommends on the islands when you move to Holland, like travel, yeah. like go yeah, see yeah, the yeah. world and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like whenever I fucking saw your yeah. Instagram page, you'd be like, "What the hell am I not traveling?" <laughs> but you you really made great use of that. Like stepping aside from like the the medicine part of it, like yeah. you still found time to yeah. travel and see a lot of shit. Yeah, well, uh, the two reasons for that. Like, in the beginning of uh, when I came to Holland, like, going back to Curse, I wasn't something I was thinking about, right? Ooh. Like, I was doing something for me, something I enjoyed doing, going to med school was for me, right? And in the last couple of years, it was more, like, I feel more this connection with the island and wanting to go back. And the second part is, like, I lived 18 years in Curacao, right? I had no immediate reason to go back, right? You've seen it. You know what I, it is. Exactly. Like, I, I miss my family. I really I love going back. I love seeing my family there. But then at some point, like, me and my mom, like, my mom had never traveled before, right? Like, she, she grew up in Aruba, came to Holland and studied, and then moved to, to Curacao, right? After I was born. Like, so she never traveled a lot, right? So when I came to Holland, I went, I can't even remember where I went, but I, I loved it. And I was telling my mom about it. I could tell that she really also wanted to travel. So at that point, we made the deal, right? Like, you only, when you're in school, you only have a uh, Christmas vacation and uh, just a normal vacation, right? Around August. Yeah. So it's super expensive to go back to Curacao, right? Like two yeah, grand those, maybe? Yeah, easily. those seasons, easy. Ex exactly. People don't understand. When I tell Dutch people, like, why I don't go back to Curacao for Christmas... Plane tickets are 1,600 yeah. and yeah, 1,800 euros. Right? And they look at me like, you're fine to cure, so I'm not fucking Australia. I'm like, doesn't matter, dude. High season is fucking crazy. Exactly. Like, for that two grand, right? Yeah. Me and my mom have taken so many vacations from that money, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. The same amount of money we would spend on, on going to... Curacao, or for me to go into Curacao, the two of us could go somewhere. So once a year, we try to make one big trip. And then we go three weeks, and uh, we've been to a lot of places now. It's yeah, been great. Because like I said, that's one thing that people really try and give as advice to people moving to it. Yeah. They say, make the effort to travel. Make the, tra yeah, make the effort sure. to see the for world. Because sure. sure. if you're coming from Curacao, a lot of people, they know maybe Curacao, Bonaire, yeah. Aruba. Some people have been to Holland before because of their family, or they've been to maybe just... Like Florida, because yeah. it's, it's, close it's close by. But that, that's kind of where, where the pocket stops. Yeah. But I, I would give that as advice to someone, too. Like, a mistake that I made was I didn't travel at all. I was yeah. just focusing on different things, and I didn't make the means to do so. Yeah. But anyone listening, if you're someone yeah, who's, sure. who's graduating and yeah. moving to Holland, make the effort. Travel as much as possible. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Yeah. Like, you're young. Like, live the refugee life. Go stay in a hostel. Go stay in a bed <laughs> yeah, and breakfast yeah, yeah. and all those yeah. tiny things. Yeah. What was the most memorable travel, memorable travel trip for you? I think going back to China, right? Like, so far, far away, like, my roots are Chinese, right? Yeah. Like, my grandpa was full Chinese. Like, just going to China, like, I, I don't have that connection to it. Like, if someone asks me, I'll never say, like, uh, I'm, I'm from China yeah. or I don't identify as Chinese or anything. But, like, it's still part of me, right? So going back and seeing that culture, seeing that country, it's great. Like, well, wasn't that a culture shock? Cause it's, yeah, it's so different. And yeah. also the, the different regions are so different. Like, Beijing is so different. And, like, if you go to, like, Hong Kong, for example, that's completely different. And all of it's incredibly great. Like, I'd recommend everyone to go see China at least once. Yeah, man. China is definitely something that's on my bucket list. And it should but, be. But, like... <laughs> Like, you've been to so many different places. Like you've been also to Thailand, I, I remember yeah, seeing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Where else have you been? Like, g well, g give us a rundown. Ooh. Well, uh, Bali, cliche. I've been to Thailand, Nothing wrong for with example. That. We did a road trip in Chile. That was also great. We went all the way from Chile, the north, really? of, north to the south of Chile. To like, so Chile is a yeah, really, yeah. really long country, yeah. top to bottom. That, was, like that was great. Yeah. <laughs> so we did one long road trip. There was fantastic. In the mountains and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every like hour drive, the scenery completely changes. One hour, you could be driving through the mountains and complete snow and, and stuff. And then an hour later, you'd be in the desert. Jesus. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I also recommend to everyone. 
a fantastic place. Yeah. Where else have you been? Like uh, I did Nepal. I did an internship in Nepal. Really? Yeah. Internship? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, internship for, what, what, what were you busy with? Like I did in between uh, the first three years. So when you're doing more of uh, lectures and stuff and then uh, the clinical rotations. Before I started the clinical rotations, I wanted to do an elective. So I did a uh, GP elective. Uh, so at least that was the plan. And then uh, the big earthquake happened. I can't remember in what year that was. 2016 maybe? Yeah, 2015, I'm okay. guessing. So it was this really big earthquake in Nepal, right? A lot of it was destroyed. The country was in shambles and everything. And I still had my elective plan before that, right? So I was thinking about like, hmm, should I go? Should I not go? Like uh, there was warning giving out that it was safe to, to travel there. But my question was like, what am I going to do there? Like, like, I don't even know if my elective is still there. Yeah. So I had contact with them and they were like, yeah, you can still come. The doctor's still working. And then I ended up doing a half-half. So half of the week I'd be... because. I hadn't done any clinical rotations yet, so I couldn't do anything really. It was mostly for me to learn, right? Yeah. So I got to walk along with the doctor and he'd explain stuff, explain the patients he was seeing. Also, I don't speak Nepali, so even less. It was interesting, and the other half of my week was uh, consisted of building houses, something I've never done really? before. Yeah, it's so weird. So like, like it was just half... You know, learn to be a doctor, half humanitarian work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's wow. what it ended up being. And it was very fulfilling. I'm glad I got to do it. Like, yeah, because Nepal is not like a very common vacation no, destination. No, it so, is not. Like most people wouldn't just end up in Nepal. Yeah, yeah. That's great, dude. Yeah, it was great. Great. And also the community you got to be into, right? Like, uh, mostly. So worldly, man. Damn. Yeah, if, I try to be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's definitely like, like something that I think people should not underestimate or underappreciate when they move here. As a student, when you move here, fucking travel. I've been literally to, yeah. I've been to Ireland once, but that was for a few days yeah. for a powerlifting conference. Yeah. Like we've been to London maybe like for three days. And then, yeah. like, like the neighboring countries, like I mean, the Köln for a convention, <laughs> but so, but you drive to the convention, yeah. you step out, you come back in, yeah. and Brussels and Antwerp, but that was it for the rest. Yeah. We, we haven't traveled yet. Yeah, but to be honest, we also don't have to underestimate like how worldly we are just by the fact that we're moving here, right? Like, Absolutely. How many that's people a good can say that? Point. Like that, that's a bigger that's step a big than you point. Yep. Yeah. Like when you're in high school, you just like it's something you do, right? Like looking back at it now, I'm like that's insane, right? Yep. Just move to Holland on your own and just yeah. start, suck it out, suck it out, start a whole life here, yeah. and do everything. Like and like people always say, like a lot of you, a lot of us struggle in the first year, right? A lot of people Absolutely. don't make their first year. Absolutely, right? I fucked up so bad in the first year, dude. That's not weird at all, no. is it? Right? Like you still have to figure out how to be an adult on your own, like. Yeah. I, I think we take that for granted how yeah, big of a step sure. that is but also so. because you arrive there already exposed to so much I mean like I keep mentioning it because I truly believe it that growing up in the islands yeah. in a culture with a mixed pot of people and, and yeah. different ethnicities and everything like we are bred very culturally yeah. in my opinion yeah. like we speak many multiple languages when we're yeah. growing up um, everything is super diverse there you have and the, the cool thing is that you have people from Indian background yeah. Chinese background but everyone to me is equally anti exactly like sometimes exactly. you have someone who's yeah, yeah. Chinese who walks up Still and, and, yeah, and he throws in like hey a war guy and it's yeah. like okay this dude exactly. is legit he grew yeah. up in fucking like, yeah. like all the all the specific neighborhoods the same yeah. thing with Indian people same thing for, from every race exactly as like, much like, Antiano as you mean yeah like, like if you if you don't know when you align everyone next to each other if you put like like just look at our group when we were growing yeah. up me you like uh, Graham Tarek Nader yeah. Jason Ruggenaert like yeah. like all the colors of like on Benetton yeah. ad right yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But everyone is truly hardcore Antiano. Yeah. It's, a, it's part of us. Yeah, yeah. So when we arrive here, we're already very, very cultural, yeah. in my opinion, yeah, and no, how I, I describe you're definitely it. Definitely right in that. Yeah, so that's a good yeah. point. You you arrive already with that, and then you're just thrown to the pits, be like, hey, yeah. suck it the fuck out. I still have the first picture I took in Holland. Really? Like the first picture I took in Holland. It's of a train. It's a train? I've yeah. never Ooh. seen a train before in my oh, life. Dude, no. So. <laughs> Like a train, tram, and shit. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I'm in fucking Hogwarts. Exactly. Right now. Like, yeah. I remember the f- when when we arrived, we we made a point to meet up in I think it was in Den Haag. Yeah. Or in Rotterdam? No, Rotterdam. It was to just just hang out with people because you have your group of friends yeah. in school. Yeah. But one people goes to Utrecht. Someone yeah, everyone goes somewhere else. Exactly. So we we made a point to like go hang out. Yeah. But when we arrived. No one knew what to do <laughs> once we arrived there. We were like with 20 people. Was Ava Hart was there. Yeah, yeah. Ono was there and shit. Yeah. And there were a few people who moved there the year before. Four. Yeah. And you notice these guys been for a year. They didn't know what the fuck to do either. <laughs> so we just basically, we sat down yeah, somewhere where there were like these, yeah. these picnic tables and chairs. Yeah. No one ordered shit because everyone was like, I just got here. I shouldn't spend money. <laughs> money. So we just walked around Rotterdam yeah. and it was like, I guess we're done. Okay, later guys. It's basically what we used to do on Curacao. Sit true. around at picnic tables. Yeah, but um, in Curacao we had some different uh, background. Yeah, but 
Like, it's funny that, like, you ended up becoming a doctor, I ended up becoming a business owner because we did some stupid <laughs> shit in the islands. We, like, true, it, it true, was true, completely true, undoctory true. and un entrepreneur true. behavior. Yeah. I think that's part of it. I think it shaped who we are, right? Absolutely. Like, better, I'm so right? grateful for it, dude. Like, it took me longer to get into med school, but I don't regret it at all. Like, one, I had a great time. It was a fun, like, I had a fun childhood uh, on Curacao, right? And I think the best. I'm a better By person far for the it. Best. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I just, I'm, I'm a very nostalgic person, so I just love reminiscing, talking about the past, but. The effort we made to enjoy our childhood was yeah. awesome. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't yeah, fuck around. Yeah. We, we weren't just waiting for fun stuff to happen. We would pick each other up, and it was yeah, really, exactly. like it was like either you would pick me up or I would pick Timmy up or whatever. We would just pick each other up, and we ended up being with five cars. We would just stand at the yeah at the behind um, Mansings. Yeah, just well, park everywhere, right? Yeah, like everywhere. Chill Hill, every, yeah, chill like, exactly. Pie, like, every, and we we would just like go pick each other up. Yeah, like oh, you don't have a ride? I got you. Yeah. Pick you up and just be somewhere. And be like okay. What are we going to do? Yeah. And probably end up at Danny's fucking for some exactly. reason or another. But we did a lot of stuff. Like, uh, like you're saying, we, we were very active. Like Super I think active. most weekends we always had a plan or we never had a plan, yeah. but we always did something. We made that something was, happen. Yeah. And we remember, we also still had the job, right? At the airport. We also yeah, did yeah. that for quite a while. Oh, yeah. We worked together yeah, at the airport. For a year, right? God damn. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Uh, that was fun, but also hectic, remember? Hectic, yeah. Because I, I, I'm, look, I'm by no means a dumb person, but I just couldn't. Like the programming language we're using for <laughs> yeah, system, that's ridiculous. I just it just it just didn't click <laughs> with me. MS DOS looking system. God yeah. damn! Like every CD time I, I had to get Bali to come fucking yeah. help me out because like okay, this dude, <laughs> like he's saying this, but the system says yeah. that. Like, I, so the fuck, I right, just let me be the guy who puts the baggage on the fucking yeah. belt. Let me be that dude. Well, remember when the dudes that put the baggage on the belt just left? Left because our plane was late. Yeah, and then we had to do left. that. Yeah, I remember one time. It was such. A, it was my first hardcore like make it on my own moment that yeah. the plane was delayed because it was a charter flight to yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. The plane was delayed and we had to stay there the whole fucking night. Yeah. We were there until yeah, sunrise. Yeah. yeah. And then I remember. And then, and and then go to school afterwards. Yep. And we yeah. went to school. Oh, that was dope, dude. And we were so cool getting to school. Like, yeah, we just got off of a shift. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, little did I know we spent the day cleaning a fucking plane. Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. Because everyone I completely left. forgot about that part of my life, yeah. dude. Yeah. That was a great experience, though. You, you remember? Because Daniel and Jason worked before us, right? Was, was, was yeah, yeah. They did that for a, a year. And then after they left, they recommended us for the job, and then uh, we mm. did that for a year. It was great. It was a great uh, job. Dude, yeah, dude, it was fun. Despite all the stress. Yeah. Yeah, but we did a lot of crazy shit, too, because remember, we organized Cage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, for people who, are, who don't know, because probably no one fucking knows, <laughs> we, we basically thought, you know what would be dope if there was like a big, big gaming event. We were big into gaming. Yeah. Most kids were. We were like, yeah. let's make like a big gaming event because we threw a lot of land parties. Yeah. A lot of land parties. Yeah. We threw a lot of land parties that ended up being big ass house, house parties. parties. <laughs> so you start with gaming, all of a sudden there's girls <laughs> in the <laughs> pools and your bras and shit. It was like, what the fuck is going on? And people would bring a shitload of food and drinks and it was from Friday to Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be like, I remember so, there's so many shit. We got to have a separate podcast yeah. with Graham here and with like Ava Hart here, just like tell the stories. The stresses of organizing cages. Yeah, Went a lot into that, but yeah, but, but we were a bunch of sixteen-year-olds. Yeah. We ended up yeah, on yeah. TV. We were yeah. in the newspaper. Yeah, we had we had like close to two hundred participants also. Yeah. yeah, and and looking back, how did our parents let us do that? I know, like there, there was we invested a lot of money in that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. We, we raised sure. a lot of funds from a lot of people. Yep, and we were yeah, walking around really, with that money. Yeah, like, Regan's <laughs> dad also put in a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. and I, I remember like. Hey, but remember, we made back all that money, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we did we, make we back did it all right. that money. We did it right. And we also, we actually rented a proper room yeah, at we WTC. we were in the World Trade Center, right? Yeah. yeah. It was next to, there was another convention going on. Yeah. It was a small room, but still, we filled that place up. Yeah, not only was it, a, was one of the small rooms, where we had the big room for, for the land party itself. Yep. We also had a, a smaller room for consoles and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's weird, though, because it, it's some of those things, like, skills you learned then that you still... Use them now, right? Absolutely. I learned a lot from that. Like, Absolutely. Right? We, had, we even had that pro gamer from the States, yeah. Digi Smack. Yeah, yeah. Was, came I remember his, his actual name. Gamer name was Digi Smack. <laughs> That's all I remember. Yeah. But yeah, we made it happen, dude. We had t shirts printed and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, Arthur recently sent me the picture of, uh, of Cage, like the logo we made. You made the oh, logo, yeah, yeah, yeah. remember? Yeah, back in the day. Still dude. have that shirt. Yeah, but we were a bunch of 16 year olds just really, really wanting, yeah. wanting to make something happen. Yeah. And we, by any means necessary, yeah. I guess it was. Because remember, Rajan's dad was, because Rajan was also super into it. He was part yeah. of or making it happen too. And his, his dad was like, okay, I'll hook you guys up. I want to sponsor something. Yeah. So me and Rajan went with his dad to the bank. Yeah. And Rajan's dad, like, that's fucking, it's such a weird situation. You know how they are, right? Yeah. So, like, super, super, like, like well off people, I guess. 
Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call them rich, but you know they're rich. Oh, back then they were anyway. Yeah. But his dad is just like for a for our idea, right? Yeah, I mean. his dad was a super chill dude. Had like a matong and shit, yeah. like, a, and he would just we we would go to, um, what's what's the is the MC Bain is the other bank? There's the one with the brown logo. Oh, Banco de Caribe. Banco de Caribe, yeah. yeah. So we would just he parked there, and the dad would just walk out. He knew everyone. Like he yeah. fucking shook hands with the nah, like yeah. security guard and shit, yeah. and just went in, came out with like a big wad of money, and be like. Here you go. <laughs> Gives it to Rajan. And then I'm like, okay, I guess that 20% yeah. of our funding we need is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, that was great, dude. All of us also put in a lot of our savings. Right? Absolutely. Like, we, we drove to everyone's house like that was involved in an organization yep. and picked up the funds. And then yep. it was our responsibility, like a lot of stress. Like, are yep. we going to make back this money? Are people going to show up? And they did. So, to the point that we were like, okay, yeah. let's not buy land cables. Let's go make land cables. <laughs> yeah. So, we bought the cable separately. We went to Tapirama <laughs> oh, yeah. to get the cable and get the heads. And we had the crimper. <laughs> yeah. I, like, that oh, crimper, that was a lot of work, man. Yeah. So, making cables. And we had yeah. to Google how to make the cables and then yeah, yeah, yeah. make them and yeah. test them. Like, yeah. fuck, I did it wrong. Make a new one. Also, you remember where we got the switch from? Where? Like oh, our, yeah. There was a yeah. lab party in a weekend, right? Yeah. So, we got the switch on Friday at school. Yep. We took it. Yeah, we took it. And we brought it back we Monday. We took <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. We fucking stole it, dude. But wasn't it like, it wasn't even in Informatica locale, right? Like, they found it somewhere else. They found it in like another locale. No, this was in Informatica in the Berghoek. Yeah. I mean, we had just had a switch laying there. So we took the switch and brought right. it back. But wasn't it Averhart who took it? I don't remember. I don't remember. I just remember we had the yeah, school we, switch. Yeah. And we were stressing about like, hey, is anyone going to, who's going to notice that the switch was gone in the yeah. weekend, right? But, I was stressing, who's going to fuck it up in my house? Because <laughs> yeah. like shit broke a lot of times during the yeah, lab yeah. I'm like. As long as no one spills beer on this, we're going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And we did it afterwards a few times too, right? After we did the big one, we did a few smaller LAN parties yep. at, uh, remember the skate shop? We did one there. Yeah, we did one at school too. We did one at school too. Yeah. I think there was one more. But no, we yeah, kept it going for a while. It's pretty impressive that just a bunch of fucking 16-year-olds just so hell-bent on doing it, just yeah. making it happen, getting it done. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was a really great time. And just, just remembering the land parties that turn into big house parties. Yeah. So you start with gaming, a bunch of nerds just sitting there playing Call of Duty, going absolutely bananas on it. And then yeah. the next day, ha- the people who gamed are completely wrecked. Yeah. So yeah. you had like Rosha sleeping yeah. on the floor. Yeah. Dan- Daniel sleeping under the table. Really with just no pillow, nothing. Just yeah, sleeping yeah, on yeah. the floor. Just All successful people now. Surprisingly. <laughs> right? <laughs> ain't, ain't that some shit? Yeah. And then the next day, people end up coming like Suki showed up with food and everyone baked yeah. shit and there was way yeah. too much food. Hello community. Hello Dude, it was group. A, our, I, people never believe me when I explain it to my friends here, but our close knit yeah. group was like thirty people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Because if, if you also yeah. take like when we were also hanging out with like most people from the hut. Yeah. Because it was them, and then like like people from like who who had like unhangsel from PSA would oh, also yeah, show yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. In an instant, it would turn into a, a 30, 40 people gathering and they were just like chilling. Yeah, because there's never a problem. Like you'd show up and then you'd bring your friends and they'd bring their friends and yeah. the, the friend group kept growing. And at some point, it just became this loosely, no, not even loosely, this tight knit group of yeah. people that all really knew each other. Yeah, because yeah, we also went through our phases from like it was the moment where we were super into gaming and then yeah. there was a moment where. A lot of us were also involved in the bands, so with yeah. guys and Skip yeah, yeah, and exactly. everything. Yeah. So we we were always we always had each other's back. We always did fun shit. No one was ever excluded. Sometimes yeah. they would get out of hand because people would like the rabu the tese rabu. So like yeah, a person yeah, would yeah. bring an extra person yeah. and like who the so, fuck exactly yeah, who is this who the, who the fuck invited this dude right? Yeah, yeah. But you know what the funny thing is like. A lot of those people I'm not in close contact with anymore because you go to Holland, you, you get a career, you work, you're busy. Like we don't, we're not even in, in contact that much no. anymore. But I still know, like if I need someone, anyone in that group, you could still hit them up and they do it. Absolutely, in RP, right? Like, yeah, yeah, because we we really really grew up together. Exactly, we, that's we, a bond you yeah. don't lose, even if you grow apart a bit. Yeah, like, you still keep that. We we came into each other's lives when we needed each other, yeah. and we grew together in yeah, that sense. Exactly. And then, yeah, like the universe makes us go apart, but. Like I'm still like as close with Kiki as I've ever yeah. been. Uh. I love Tammy to death. Graham yeah. and Nader are my brothers forever. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's why I'm unbelievably grateful for the way I was raised and how I grew yeah. up on the islands because yeah. it's that that bond you have. And people don't people really don't believe me when I say like my my group of friends was like 20 folks. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we, and just you would say that because we also had the moments where you went to go to Wet and Wild to go yeah. to Mambo to go swimming. Yeah. But you and I were cheap motherfuckers. We didn't want to pay the five <laughs> yeah, guilders. The five so guilders. you would pick me up. Like it was like if you come, if you arrive before seven o'clock in the morning, yeah. you wouldn't have to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would get there at like six thirty <laughs> and just sleep on the beach and wait for everyone to show up. Okay, because we, five guilders. But that, that kind of, that's the kind of ridiculous shit you have yeah. to do with your friends yeah, yeah, yeah. to be like, okay, 
like you experience real shit together. Yeah, exactly. That was oh man, that's dope, yeah. dude. Great childhood. That's also one of the reasons I want to go back, man. That island gives me so much, right? Absolutely. So and much. I, I just, I can't stand the thought of raising my kids only in Holland. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, um, like growing up with the ocean, the yeah. most beautiful ocean in the world, right at your doorstep with the food, the culture, the people, everything. Yeah. If my kids miss out on that shit, I'm just going to feel like a shitty parent. Yeah. Like, so yeah. one way or another, I have yeah. to make sure that it works. Yeah. That they ex- at least experience it a bit, yeah, right? Dude. Like know what your childhood was like. like yeah. Like, for yeah. example, just the ocean is such a big part of our culture. Yeah. Like from, like, how it influences the food, how it influences... Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone has had a birthday party at the beach. And that's like, always a short drive away, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's like, what are you going to do for your birthday this time? It's like, okay, going to the beach, beach. is the first place yeah. holder. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's just plan that in yeah. and see if something else comes yeah. from it, right? Yeah. yeah. Ah, dude, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, I like to ask this everyone. What's the one thing, like, experience thing you miss the most about the islands? Ooh. <laughs> you just said it the beach mostly like yeah. i don't know it's it's something about the weather i think mostly it's the combination of the beach and the weather like it's always sunny right yep like you're never like in holland when when it's sunny i always have this feeling like oh man i gotta enjoy this yeah, day i like, have to go enjoy who, it who knows when we're gonna have another yeah. nice sunny day like yeah. in curacao that's much less of an issue yeah, every true. weekend it's nice weather yeah so you're uh, it's a lot more i think because of that you're also a lot more relaxed right you know tomorrow's gonna be a good day yep. you know tomorrow's gonna be sunny you know tomorrow's gonna be yeah. And I think that changes your whole way of being. So yeah. you're always a lot more relaxed when you're on the island. Yeah, that's, that's a good point because I've always felt very in control of my enjoyment on the island. Here too, because I'm a very stubborn person yeah. when it comes to enjoying life and being positive and having a good time. But on the island, it feels like no matter what tomorrow, I can make the simplest decision and have a great day. Yeah, yeah, yeah so exactly. Absolutely. And the, the yeah. weather is absolutely a big part of that. Yeah, you're a lot less rushed to do things. Yeah, yeah. because everything is also closer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here sometimes it feels like... Like hanging out with friends or making plans is it's a whole day investment. Exactly. Like if I ha- if I want to go hang out with Kiki and her daughter and with Kuna and shit, yeah. they live in Arnhem. It's not that far. Yeah. But I still gotta block out my whole day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, what, and what's the food you miss the most? I think like for me, like luckily, a lot of the things you can get or make yourself here now, right? Yeah. Like it's a lot of effort, but if you really want it, you can get it. Like the one thing I just haven't like uh, found here yet that you could just go somewhere and get it. Like un bon piscahasa. Yes. Like going just with some funchi. Yeah, because the fish nice is right. It's not the right fish. Like, no, is it? Like, you Yo, can still not. go to a market and get the same fish, no, right? No, absolutely not. No, you can't get piscah corra and You yeah, can't okay, get a good, cool. like, yeah. yeah. So the, the fish is absolutely different. Yeah, that's not, definitely what I mean. There's nothing wrong with frying whatever fish they fucking got here, but un bon piscah corra, echt yeah. hasa. Yeah. That's, also, that's, have you ever tried deep frying a fish yourself? It's fucking scary. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It gets yeah. everywhere. You burn yourself. Like, yeah, because you're. It's a whole. Because you either don't have the, the right pan for it. It's not yeah. big enough for the exactly. fish to go Exactly, like in. the tail sticking out. Exactly, or you overdo it or yeah. some shit. So yeah, yeah. What, what was your favorite spot to eat on the island? Like, what, what, who would you give the shout out to? Like, I, I wouldn't even give a shout out to anyone. I think I'd give a shout out to Caracas by like, like just getting your food and just going there. Like, yeah. when, when you go to Trukipang and like it's super busy, you just take your food and go somewhere else and eat it there. Like, always Chill Hill. Loved, yeah, always loved eating a Chill Hill, always loved eating a Caracas by just taking your food there. Yeah. yeah. That's a very island thing. Yeah. Like, get food from a truck, drive <laughs> 10 minutes to a beach, yeah. sit on a beach with your friends at night. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's almost no, like, belichting or whatever, exactly. just fucking eat. Hey, but we have the best after party food, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. By far and wide, no disrespect to anyone in the world, but yeah. the islands don't fuck around when it comes yeah. to one, partying and food. Food. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's dope, dude. Hey, man, thanks for reminding me of all yeah. this dope shit, dude. Yeah. Appreciate it. And thank you also on behalf of everyone who agrees with me for the work you guys are doing, effort for the medical field on Curacao. I mean, AMA is, is no yeah. joke. It's no small feat. It's no small task. So it's great to see how much you guys are actually putting the best foot forward for that. I mean, if we're, we're all going to be better off for it in the future. So from us to you guys, thank you very much. Keep up the yeah. good work. And uh Keep keeping us healthy, man. Yeah, thanks. I think everyone in the association would appreciate to hear that. It's like a passion for them. It's a calling, but it's always nice to have that re- reciprocated by someone. Absolutely, because like, it's, yeah. it, it's super important and it's super valuable for us. It's, yeah, for sure. It's what's going to help us achieve what we need to achieve. It, like a, a country can't grow if it's not healthy. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. It's part of it. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Dope.